In this lecture, we're going to continue on with chapter 2, covering 2.5 to 2.8, um, and discussing instantaneous velocity and speed, as well as acceleration. So your instantaneous velocity is going to be the velocity of a particle at an instant in time. Um, and we find that out by using a limit. So as you can see in our equation here, the velocity is going to be equal to the limit as time approaches zero. So as delta t gets lower and lower and lower, approaches zero, we're trying to figure out what delta x is, what this ratio is. So that's given by dx dt, which is our derivative. Um, we also might show this in uh, physics as x prime. So if you see an x prime, all that means is it's the first derivative of x with respect to delta t. Um, so v, the instantaneous velocity, is the slope of the tangent line of the position versus time graph. So if we look at our position versus time graph, we're going to put time on the x-axis, x on position on the y-axis. If you had a curve like that, let's say I wanted to know what um, the slope of it was at an instant in time, or the velocity at an instant in time. So if I say this point right here, I need to find the slope of this tangent line. And that's what the, the uh, derivative lets us do. Um, it also mentions at the bottom here that velocity is a vector quantity, which means it also has a direction. So it's going to have a um, magnitude and a direction. All right, so let's start with an example. Uh, so the figure shows the x of t plot for an elevator cab that is initially stationary then moves upward, which uh, we take to be the positive direction of x, and then stops. So you have an, ele elevator, an elevator accelerating up to a speed as it's climbing, and then it slows down and stops. All right, so it's asking us to plot velocity versus time. All right, so we need to uh, figure out some information first. All right, so basically we want to figure out what the slope of um, the x of t graph is. So this graph here, we want to figure out what the slope is. Um, now if you look from 0 to 1, we see that it's, the um, position isn't changing at all. So we know that the velocity from 0 to 1 is just going to be 0 meters a second. Now if we look at the next bit, 1 to 3, we know that it's going to be slowly accelerating because it's not changing position at a constant rate. That means it must be accelerating. Um, so we're not really sure. We can't really solve for what exactly that is and if we have a little more information. So let's go ahead and move on to the 3 through 8. So this line right here, the straight line, we know that uh, the position's changing, which means it has a velocity. And we can figure out what that is. Okay, so we're just going to use our velocity equation, which is v is equal to delta x over delta t. And if we use this point c and this point b, we're able to um, find the slope. So we'll just say it starts at about 24, and they give us these dots, so it's going to be starting at 24 uh, for the x and then it's going to go down all the way to 4. Again, that's given. All right, so our change is going to be 24 meters minus 4 meters. And we're going to divide that by our change in t. So our change of t is going from 8 seconds to 3 seconds. So 8 seconds to 3 seconds. Okay, so that's just going to be 20 meters over 5 seconds which is equal to 4 meters a second, okay? All right, so we know it's a constant velocity between those two points. Um, and then continuing on, if we look from 8 to 9, which is right here, we know it's, it's decelerating because um, the slope is getting less steep. And then from 9 to 10, velocity from 9 to 10 is just going to be 0 because you know the position's not changing. Okay, so we found the value. Um, now we can actually start plotting this, all right? So down here you can see they have this plotted out. 
So from 0 to 1, we know that the velocity was 0. From 9 to 10, we know the velocity is 0. Um, and then we know from 3 to 8, the velocity is uh, 4 meters a second. So if you notice, we have velocity plotted on the left this time, and we have time plotted on the bottom. Um, we can put in that straight line there for the velocity from 3 to 8. Um, and then we can just say that between 1 and 3, it's the velocity is Gra or, um, constantly increasing, and then from 8 to 9 it's constantly decreasing. Um, we don't know the exact values, but we can just assume um, that the velocity or the acceleration is constant between those points. Okay. Okay, so now we're talking about acceleration or the average acceleration. All right, so average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. All right, so just like velocity was delta, excuse me, velocity was delta x over delta t, well, um, acceleration is just delta v over delta t. Um, so here the velocity, um, here the velocity is v1 at time 1 and v2 at, v at uh, time 2. The instantaneous acceleration is defined as the derivative, just like before. All right, so our acceleration is going to be the derivative of velocity um, over, de, uh, excuse me, delta v over delta t. Okay, so in terms of the position function, the acceleration can be defined as a is equal to dv over dt, which is just given, or it's the derivative of dx over dt. So combining that, you end up with this, or again, in physics, we might just denote that as x double prime. So x double prime is going to be the second derivative of the x function. All right, so SI units for acceleration are meters a second squared. Let's continue on. All right, so if a particle has the same sign for velocity and acceleration, then that particle is going to be speeding up. Okay, so if you have the velocity and the acceleration both in the same direction, you know that the speed is going to be increasing. Now, conversely, if a particle has opposite signs from its acceleration, it's going to be slowing down. So again, if v was in this way, that's v. Uh, but if acceleration was in the opposite direction, you know that the speed is actually slowing down. Um, so it says a, a body is often react to accelerations, but not to velocities. So if you notice in these pictures, you're seeing the effects of an acceleration, but when you're going really fast, um, let's say in an airplane, you know you're going fast, but you don't feel the constant changes, changes in acceleration or these g-forces. Um, so at the bottom, uh, just mentioning at the gravity at our surface, 9.8 meters a second squared, this is something that you will uh, not forget in this class. We'll use it many times, and it's often just denoted as g. So if you see a g, it's going to be 9.8 meters a second squared. Okay. So a particle's position on the x-axis uh, is given by this equation. All right, so this is finally we're going to start getting into some derivatives um, when x is in meters and t is in seconds. So it's asking because position x depends on time t, the particle must be moving. Find the particle's velocity function uh, and its acceleration function. All right, well, let's start with the velocity. We know that the velocity is just going to be uh, the derivative of x, x over t. So if we do the derivative of this function, the derivative of 4 is going to be 0 minus 27 plus 3t squared. Okay, and to show how I did that, um, the derivative of constant is always going to be zero. Um, with we have negative twenty-seven t. Oops, negative twenty-seven t. It's always going to since there's a one here, we're going to pull the one out front, and then subtract the exponent by one. So it's going to end up as negative twenty-seven t to the zero, uh, and t to the zero any variable to the zero power is just going to be one. So that whole thing just kind of goes away. Um, for the last term, we had t cubed. So again, we pull the number out front. It's going to be 3t, and then we subtract one from the exponent. 
you get 3t squared. So that's what we have up here. Okay, let's just get rid of all this. Okay, so then just rearranging this and simplifying, um, you get the velocity is 3t squared minus 27. Now if I wanted to find the acceleration, all I have to do is take the next derivative. All right, so the acceleration is just the derivative of a velocity function with respect to t. So I'll just do the derivative again. I'll pull the 2 out front, subtract this by 1. That's just going to be a 1. So this is t, excuse me, 6t. And the negative 27 is going to go to 0 because, again, the derivative of any constant is going to be 0. All right, so our acceleration is just 6t. If you notice, that's what they give you down here. You have negative 27 plus 3t squared and 6t. The next question asks if there's ever a time when v is equal to 0. Well, we can find that out. We want to, if we just set v is equal to 0, we take our velocity function up here. We just set it equal to 0. So if 0 is equal to the velocity, which is 3t squared, minus 27. So now we want to solve for t. We'll just rearrange the equation. So you have 3t is now just equal to 27. All I did was take this 20, uh, negative 27, add it to both sides. Um, so we have it down there. And then t squared is going to be equal to 9, because we're just dividing 3 on both sides. And we'll take the square root of both sides. And we see, make sure when we take the square root, we do the plus or minus. So t is equal to plus or minus 3. Well, if we look at the negative, negative 3, we know that that can't exist because there, there isn't a negative time. Time always starts at 0. Um, so we know that at just t is equal to positive 3, um, you get a velocity that's 0. Okay. Okay, so when the uh, acceleration is constant, we can use a couple rather, rather useful equations that kind of simplify everything. Um, so as you can see up here, if we have constant acceleration, we get these pretty straightforward, uh, what we're going to call kinematic equations, um, and they'll be very useful as we go forward. So I kind of wanted to start with an example so you can see kind of how they're used. Okay. Um, so the figure here gives us a particle with velocity v uh, versus its position as it moves along the x-axis with constant acceleration. So what is its velocity at x is equal to zero? So we're trying to find its velocity here. So we can use the constant acceleration equations, um, in particular um, 216, which is v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught. So x minus x naught is just showing us our change in position. Um, anytime they give you a v without any subscript, they're referring to a final v. Um, so you can just write an f in there if you wanted to, and v naught is going to be your initial v. So same with the x, um, you're going to have a final f and then an initial. Um, okay, so first we can try, well, we want to try to get v naught, which is our initial velocity. Um, so if we tried doing it that way, um, we know that we can identify x naught as 0, 2, right? Because at v naught, x is 0. That would be the initial position wherever it starts. Um, so we can start plugging in numbers. So we don't know what the final velocity is, um, but we can choose one of these. So if we choose maybe um, this last point here, where the velocity is 0 and the position is 70, we can start plugging in some numbers. So let's say that that is 0 meters a second squared. And our initial velocity, which we're trying to find, uh, plus 2 times the acceleration, and the final position, which we know is 70 meters minus 0 meters, because again, um, the initial point is 0. 
The problem with this is we have two unknown variables and we only want one. Um, so to get around this, we wouldn't be able to solve just this equation by itself. Um, what we could do is try the other position. Um, instead of the zero, zero point, um, let's try the eight, of the, where the velocity is eight meters a second and position is 20, um, and then velocity is zero and 70. That would let us probably solve for our acceleration. So again, we're gonna use the same equation. Plus two A. Okay, but instead my final point is going to be the 0 and 70 point. Um, my initial point we're going to use is the 8 meters a second and 20. All right, so let's go ahead and plug those things in. All right, so our final velocity again is going to be 0. And our initial velocity is then going to be 8 meters a second squared plus 2a. Again, we don't know the acceleration. Um, our final position is going to be down here, so that's going to be 70 meters. And our initial position is going to be 20 meters. Okay. So we want to rearrange this equation and solve for A. And when we do so, if we flip to the next page, we can see um, that they, that's exactly what they did here. And they ended up getting the acceleration is negative 6.4 meters a second squared. Okay, so since now we have the acceleration, we can plug that back into our original equation um, that we solved for and then we couldn't get anywhere. All right, so if we go back, we take this equation. Okay, let's just take that down here. So this was zero is equal to our initial velocity plus two, and now we can plug in the a, so it's negative 0.64 meters a second squared times 70. And I just simplified it, getting rid of all the zeros that we had. All right, all right so now we can kind of move things around. Um, when we do that, if we move uh, v naught squared to the other side, we get negative two, well, we'll just pull the negative sign out to the front, 0.64. Okay, times 70 meters, and then the negative signs are gonna cancel. Um, so now we can do the square root. So we'll square root both sides, and we'll find out that V naught is equal to 9.5 meters a second. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. We'll see you next time.